Hey everybody, um, I'm in the middle of a series of videos about how to write up a lab report. Um, I'm going to say this at the beginning here that I would love it if you would continually refer back to these. Um, anytime you have any questions or you need to know how to do this or you want to have a question on the introduction or the methods or the analysis, please refer back to these individual videos because you don't want to um, mess up something that I put in here. So let's talk about the methods in this case. So this is the procedures. Now I will tell you that the first thing that I'm going to do is get rid of this because in a lab doesn't have these things in parentheses. I put them in parentheses because they're just notations about what this stuff is. Um, you shouldn't necessarily have um, <laughs> those notations in there. So what you're going to do is you're going to outline thing. You're going to outline things stepwise. Now, after that, you should include an observation. So the point is, is that a lot of times when you have a step, after that step, you have an observation, whether it's data that's in a data table or whether it's an observation that's physical, like it's brown or there's a lot or it's starting to smoke or it's smelling. Um, you know, there's a, th you should have a step and then following the step, whatever observations there are about that particular step. So here again, you're going to say, I made a notation here that we need to use what we call passive voice. So no, I, we, um, us, they. So notice the subject of each of these sentences was the science. The subject of the sentence isn't me doing the chemistry, okay? It wasn't that first I measured the height, okay? It's the subject is the rods. So that's what we mean by passive voice, okay? So in general, just to kind of review, you want to then use your transition words. You're going to give a step, like here is the step in the procedure, and then that's going to be followed by um, some sort of observation. And an observation can be um, a number, it could be data, or it could be some sort of physical trait or physical characteristic of whatever that step is. The next thing is if you have lots of data you may want to include a data table. Okay so the example that I have is the rods lab. We measure all those rods and so you may want to go here to insert table and then you can insert a data table or if you have a data table in a Google form you can insert a data table and you can enter the data. Now a couple of rules about data tables. You want to make sure that the data table has a, tit a, a title. We call that a caption. So a caption. And the caption is going to say, let's see here, table one. And it always goes underneath and it's going to be the name of the data table. So this would be, um, if it's the Rods Lab, it would be um, the, um, it would be information about the rods. If you're trying to determine the percent chloride in an unknown, maybe you record the data in a data table and you have percent chloride um, data from percent chloride lab and typically data tables go in the methods section okay why would you use a data table um, you use a data table again if you have lots of data now if you don't have lots of data you don't have to include a data table they're not required okay so i think that concludes a um, the method section and that's going to encompass um, the method section for both 
honors, and even AP classes. Um, there's not any difference between the two um, method sections. So have a great day.